So I think what's happening is tablets have always been um, what people would consider touch. And then of course phones is really where it started originally. But what we actually see happening is it's going across the desktops, all-in-ones are starting to see that. And then you start to look at some of the things we're doing with things like Perceptive Pixel, which are 83 inch basically touch screens and 55 inch touch screens. And what that really means is that the same application can run from a phone all the way up to an 83 inch screen. For Windows 8 to really break into the enterprise, people are going to have to say, touch is an important part of, of computing. And I think in the life science arena, people tend to think of collaboration as just documents. And collaboration, when you start thinking about touch, you start thinking about things like chemical structures and imagery and video and the kinds of things that really want to be touched and that allow you to do things with gestures to quickly move through them. So I think of protosphere, especially the room metaphors of protosphere, as an extension of the lightweight collaboration that's been occurring into a more heavyweight, industrialized way of thinking about it. And in the, in the uh, life science arena, specifically, chemists think structurally. So to imagine that a chemist is sitting there and instead of drawing stick figures that they're actually looking at the molecule and they can understand and look underneath it and they can actually see how the bonds are working together or how they're attracted to one another or what's happening with some sort of a covalence type of a scenario. So you start thinking about the animation capabilities that Protosphere can bring to these structures and can bring to the computational load that people have always had to kind of think about what's really happening there. They can actually see it and interact with it and touch it and gesture with it. The other thing too is you think about the the location aspect of it. And it's not limited to somebody that has jumped on a plane and go to China. The guy in China and the guy in Ohio are working on the same molecule. And they possibly may be doing it over different points in time. So specifically to clinical trials and specifically to the distance question, I think things like Protosphere say, you don't have to jump on an airplane to be there. That being in a room and being able to look at structures and things that you couldn't even do if you were there physically, transcends that. And so people like PPD are saving hundreds of thousands of dollars in travel costs by basically building their headquarters virtually and then bringing people from China and Indonesia and India and into this environment where they all get the same experience. When they get done with the training, they feel like they've been in the headquarters. That's, that's the amazing thing that somebody like PPD has pulled off. So I think that what Protosphere just brings to the game and what we see also with PPD is that architecture of a room environment has a lot to do with whether or not people feel free to share. It's the fact that it feels grounded and it feels alive. And like when you have two avatars and they're standing side by side and they shift their way or they blink or they're, they're talking as you're talking, their lips are moving, kind of pseudo lip sync kind of stuff. You're trying to get people to say, forget about the technology, this really is you, and you're really talking to this other person, and their personalities inside this avatar. Just those subtle things that I think make a big difference. And people feel good in an environment like that. It doesn't feel sterile, it feels like something that is exciting. You know, there is no limitation to it, um, and that's what's really cool, is that the cost of building an architecture that supports ideation is essentially zero for, for hundreds of people. So I, I'm excited about what that really means to the business culture.